So what we want to talk about today is 2018 and a recap the year. Again, Melody told you I'm Jeff Jones with Statistical Surveys, and we're going to recap the trailer restorations for 2018. But before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about Statistical Surveys, how we collect our data, and exactly what we're reporting on. So the company was founded in 1958. We're considered the premier provider of market share solutions for the trailer industry, RVs, towable and motorized, marine, manufactured housing, and power sports. We track retail sales within the trailer industry, and we are considered the industry scorecard. Trailers are broken down into five segment groups. We break them down into boat, enclosed, horse, livestock, and open. So the data that we get, we process it, and it's all based on new trailers purchased at a dealership. The dealer registers the trailer, and in some cases, the individual that purchased the trailer may register it with the state DMV. Statistical surveys purchase the VIN records from all 50 states. SSI takes these VINs and decodes them by manufacturer, length, axles, etc. As many of you know, a VIN number contains a world identifier number, the first three digits of every VIN number. That's how we identify the manufacturer from that world identifier number that's assigned by NHTSA. We decode the data and put it in a format that our customers can use to make more informed business decisions. Only new trailers appear in the reports. There's two types of information, and this is very important. There is placement information and dealer information. So let's talk about placement first. It is based on where a trailer is registered. All 50 states report placement information. Used by the industry to determine market share gives a complete picture of the trailer industry down to the five segment groups that I mentioned earlier. It will tell us the size of the market by state, BTA, county, city, and down to a zip code level. So you can see all the way down to a zip code what manufacturers are selling what segment of trailer and what the market is doing in that zip code, whether it's growing or shrinking. Dealer data. It's based on the dealer who sold the trailer. So it's all about the dealer, not where it was registered, but the dealer that sold the trailer. Dealer information is only available in 23 states, unlike placement where it's available in all 50 states. So when we purchase this record from the DMV, it has the VIN number. And as I told you, we identify the manufacturer by the VIN number, by the world identifier. But the state has to also give us the dealer number. And again, not all of them do. Dealer information be used exclusively when looking at what a dealer is selling. It's a great way to compare dealers. We wish all 50 states reported dealer information as they do on the placement side, but they don't. So here are the 23 states that report dealer information. 
look through it real quick, then I'm gonna show you a map. So here's the map. Everything in the blue is the states that report. Again, I don't have to show you a map of the placement information because if I did, everything would be blue because they all report. So let's first take a quick look back in time at a five-year history for all the segment groups. And as we go through here, I'm going to break out each group because there may be some that have joined the webinar today that handle only open trailers, some that handle enclosed, whatever the case may be. So we don't wanna leave anyone out. So we're gonna break down each segment group, but first we're just gonna look at the industry as a whole. And as you can see in 2014, the industry was just over 800,000. And today we're just over a million. Back before 2000, it was probably 2007 where the industry hit a high of just over a million units. Then 2009 came along. We all know where the industry went. It was about 2017 before the industry totally rebounded from that and toppled what it what its high was before. So we want to look at the different groups and see how they fared in 18 versus 17. So you can see in 2018 there was a million 65,000 units sold or registered. In 17 there was a million 63,000. The market was basically flat. It was up 1.14%. And then you can go through each segment group and see where it fell out. And when you look through it, what you'll notice is all groups are down except for the boat industry. The boat industry grew by 3.31% along with its market share. I'm not gonna read through each one of these numbers because y'all are more than capable of reading. Uh, we'll hesitate just a little bit at each one so you can look through it. So let's talk about the top 10 states for all segments. Again, it was a million 65,000 units. The state of Texas sold, registered more trailers than any other state. They registered 128,418. The market was up almost 2%. Florida, California, right on down the list. You can see that North Carolina is in there. They're number four, but they actually lost ground this year about almost three and a half percent. New York and Illinois did the same thing but they still made the top 10 based on the number of units that were registered in 2018. Here's a map of the United States. It's just showing you state by state. It's just a quick overview. Everything in the, in the green, you'll notice has got an upward trend. Everything in the pink is down just a little bit, where Tennessee is in the red, it's down the most at minus 33. And again, this is for all segment groups. Let's talk about BTAs. What is a BTA? It's a basic trade area that's set up by Rand McNally, the map maker. It has nothing to do with statistical surveys. Rand McNally says that people in these BTAs are more apt to purchase in that BTA. What makes up a BTA are counties. Every B 
VTA varies in the number of counties. Houston is the number one VTA and it has 21 counties in it. Dallas-Fort Worth has 25 counties in it. When you get up in the Northeast where they have a lot of rivers, there'll be fewer counties within a BTA because of the distance traveled to cross the river. And the same applies out west in the mountain ranges. Typically, you will see a lot fewer counties. There are some BTAs that only have one county in them. So again, Houston BTA is the number one BTA. It registered 29,218 units. It was up 3.74%. In the interest Interesting, Dallas is number two with 28,000 units. It's down almost 5%. And if you remember from the past screen, when we looked at the states, Texas was the number one state, and it was up just a little over 1%. So it varies a lot across the state and the smaller you drill down to it, the areas can really change. So just because a state is up or down does not mean that it's the same where your dealership is located. If the state's up, you're in that area where your dealership is located, it could be down, vice versa. So these are the top 10. We get into link groups. What is, what is the most popular link group? And again, this is based on all segments across the US, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best in your area. So nine to 16 foot is the number one link group in restorations for 2018. 193,000 units. You can see it's down about half a point, a little bit over half a point. You can see 17 to 20 foot is up four and a half points. So it just kind of gives you a, an idea of what's going on across the industry in length groups. Now we're gonna talk about a segment group. We're gonna look at enclosed first. So enclosed, you can see where it was in 2014, just a little bit over 150,000. And this year you can see where it is in 18. So it's been pretty much a steady increase, not a lot, um, maybe so in 14 and 15, but in the last two years, really not at all. Again, we look at the top states, and if you remember, in all segment groups, Texas was number one. But in closed trailers, there was 213,000 registered this year, 214 last year, markets down just a little over half a point, but Florida is the number one state and it's up 7.73%. You can see what Texas, um, we talked about it just a minute ago. Uh, you can see where it is. In enclosed trailers, it's up a little bit more than uh, in all segment groups in Texas. So here's the map. In the first map we looked at, it was pretty much green. Here, we've got a lot of the, I call it pink. Um, markets down a little bit, not down a lot. Of course, you've got the green where the market is up. And you can really see 
Florida, Georgia, where it's up 7%, Tennessee, where it's down. So now we talk about the top BTAs. And if you remember, Florida was the top state for enclosed trailers. Look how far you have to go down to find the top BTA that's in Florida, Tampa. So again, the top line didn't change. We're, we're at 213,000, but the different BTAs changed. Here we talk about length groups. Nine to 16 footer is still the number one length group in enclosed trailers. And so is the 17 by in 20 through 20 <clears throat> compared to all segment groups. So now we're gonna talk about open trailers and you can see the bar graph and you can see the bar graphs are pretty more pretty much uh, a lot larger in this one than they were in the last one it's because of the numbers i think if you look at where we were in 14 at 520,000 units roughly along there and now today we're at 620,000 units and that's just a ballpark. I'm kind of rounding it off, but it kind of looks out of proportion to the enclosed and it's just because of the larger number of units. So we look at the top states. In open trailers, it's Texas. And then Florida, California. So you can see the growth in Texas was 1.15%. And look over at market share, where market share actually grew a little bit, 1.53. Well, how did it grow larger than the number of units registered? It's because if you look at all right here, where the market and sales growth was down, but Texas was up, so it outperformed the market, and that's the reason why your market share growth can go up. It's better illustrated here in Georgia, where Georgia was down in number of units registered, but their market share went up. It's because they were not down as much as the industry. Here is the map. And if you'll notice in this map, there's some darker green right here in Oklahoma, South Carolina. It's because they were up quite a bit more than the other states. Oklahoma, almost 26%. South Carolina, 28%. You can see that Tennessee was not down as much in open trailers. So we look at the top BTAs. Houston up 3.45%. Look at Dallas and Fort Worth down almost 8%, but they were still number two BTA in total registrations for 2018. Length groups, nine to 16, 17 to 20, still holding that first and second place. It looks like nine to 16 continues to be down in just about all segments, not much, but just a little bit. see that 41 plus and 31 to 40 uh, I guess they're the up the most uh, 31 to 40 24 almost 24 and a half percent it's 
talk about horse trainers. Once again, that bar graph can play a little, be a little skewed because the numbers are a lot smaller. We're on open trailers, they were a lot bigger. So we were just over 17,014. We had a little uptick in 15, 16, 17, pretty much flat. And then you went from 17 to 18, where you dropped um, here. We look at the states, top 10 states. Um, so in all, the market was down just over 4.5% from 15,800 units to 16,500. Texas is still number one. California jumped up there as number two in horse trailers, then Florida. You see that Texas was down. Colorado, Minnesota, and Oregon were down the most, but they all made the top 10. So here's the map of the industry. See uh, the pink is kind of spread out a little bit more. We still have Tennessee showing up as red. Uh, we have another state up there uh, that's red where we hadn't had it before. We don't have any real dark green states. Actually have um, three states that are that are red. BTAs, <clears throat> Dallas, Houston, one and two. Dallas seems to continue to be down just a little bit in all of them. Houston's up. You can see Salt Lake City, Denver, St. Paul, we're down the most. But look, look at Phoenix, Arizona, 22% up. Market share up 28.61. Length groups, 9 to 16 is still number one, but 17 to 20 drop way on down the chart. Livestock trailers. You can see it's just been bouncing all around. So livestock trailers are down about almost six and a half percent, thirteen thousand five hundred this year compared to fourteen thousand four hundred, down just a little over a thousand units. Texas is number one, but all these top 10 states are down except for Arkansas, which is up almost 6%. Here's the map. A lot more pink in there, a few more reds. BTAs, Dallas-Fort Worth is number one, even being down 17.5%. Houston down, San Antonio, so the top three BTAs for enclosed are in Texas, the top five, there's four out of the five in Texas. Austin is the only BTA in Texas that's up. And then we have Salt Lake that is up almost eight and a half percent. Length groups, nine to 16, still number one, but still down. The 
Again, that 17 to 20 drop down a notch in livestock trailers, or 21 to 30 took it over. The only link group that's up is 41 plus. It's up almost 14%. But you can see when you get into small numbers, 664 in 18, 583 in 17, it can make the percentage look pretty large. So you have to pay attention to that. Boat trailers, steady increase uh, since 2014. Going back to the very beginning where all segment groups were down except for boat trailers. Had it not been for boat trailers performing at about 3.5% growth, the trailer industry would have slipped back a little bit from 2017, but boat trailers kept it ahead. So we had 187,000 registered in 18 versus 181 in 17, up about almost three and a half percent. Florida being number one, which isn't surprising. 3.82% increase. You can see Louisiana and Illinois are the only two states that went down in number of units, but they still again made the top 10. Here's a map of the US. You can see some dark green states in there. I see four. I guess that's three, really. Uh, don't see any dark reds. See some pinks in there, but a lot of green. Kind of looks more like the first map we looked at of all segment groups. Here we are with the top BTAs. Minneapolis, St. Paul, number one. They're up five and a half percent. The only BTA that was down was New York. All the other ones were up. Again, Florida was the number one state, but then when you start breaking it down to BTAs, you come all the way down to number four and number six, seven and 10 before you get into Florida. And the further you break this down, the more that'll change just because it's the top state. You break it down in the BTAs, it changes. You break it down in the counties, it can totally change from BTAs, cities, zip codes, etc. Length groups. Ooh, we finally, 9 to 16, got hit out here, and we're at 21 to 30, number one. Up five, almost five and a half percent. Now in the 16s, we're up just about six percent. The two bottom ones don't surprise me that they're down and they're not large numbers at that. So there's presentation. It's just a what I call a 40,000 foot level of the market. We looked at the top 10 states, of course there's 50 states. We looked at the top 10 BTAs, the length groups, and all I can do is stress to you how important it is to understand your market. Because what we looked at today was that high level look in the market, as you could see, changed based on some of those criteria, and it will change as you drill down even further. So it's important that you understand your market.
that's all I have. Hopefully we have some questions. Yes, hi Jeff, thank you so much. This webinar has really provided us with a better look into the current numbers of the industry. We do have some questions. We're gonna start off. Um, can you just reiterate exactly what BTA means? Okay, it's a basic trade area and it's established by Ram McNally, the map maker. It has nothing to do with statistical surveys. And Rand McNally says, individuals purchasing a product in this price group are more likely to buy within the BTA that they assign and BTAs are made up of counties. Again, the counties can be one county. I pointed out Houston BTA, which is 21 counties, Dallas-Fort Worth, which is 25 counties. So it really varies. Um, we, do have, we do have maps that show you what BTAs are, uh, where they're located, what's included in a BTA. So uh, we do have that information if anybody's interested. Okay, wonderful. Uh, is there, this is a couple of questions uh, down the line. Is there a round estimate of how many trailer dealers there are nationally? Like a roundabout estimate of how many trailer dealers nationally? Again, there are only 23 states that report dealer information. So it's really hard to give a number, but I'm going to speak here and say that Corey and I have talked about it in the past, and I believe that he and I have estimated somewhere around 3,800. 3,800, wow, okay, great. Yeah, if, and if Corey disagrees with me, please speak up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jeff, real, real quick, just to chime in on that particular fact. I, I think uh, based on some other research that we've done, I would say it's probably between 48, uh, sorry, 4,005 is kind of what I'm looking at at the moment. And like you said, it's really hard to figure those numbers out with uh, the lack of reporting, but that is what my guesstimate would be. Okay. Great. We That's weren't too far apart. Yeah, absolutely. That was an excellent question. Um, the next one is, uh, can you please explain the difference uh, in a placement versus a dealer? Okay. And, and this is real important to understand because placement information is all about the manufacturer and where a trailer is registered. So we understand where market share is and it goes off of the world identifier has nothing to do where a trailer was sold it has everything to do with where it was registered and being used so that's where market share is all, all right. 50 states report Wonderful. dealer information let me just one hit on the dealer information one more time. So dealer information, 23 states report. It's all about the dealer who sold the trailer. Not where it was registered, but the dealer who sold the trailer. Okay. Okay, great. And we have another question that says, so can you, um, the information, is this only on new trailers? Is it on used trailers and new trailers? Or can you tell us a little bit more about that? It's all on new trailers. We do not include anything on used trailers in our data. The trailer information is based on the light to medium duty trailer industry. So 26,000 pounds and under. Okay, great. And we, we actually got a couple of questions on this. Um, Tennessee obviously showed some dramatically different numbers than the rest. What can you contribute that to? Is there something there that drove that decline? 
you know, it's speculation on my part. Um, all I can do is report on the data that we receive. Um, I can speculate, but it's only speculation, and I don't think this would be the the, the place to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's because I have nothing. I have nothing to back it up other than the numbers that I've shown you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. We. Uh, okay, so it looks like we actually have covered most of the questions everyone's asked. Um, so we want to just make a couple of quick announcements for NATDA. Um, first, thank you, Jeff. This has been super insightful. It's been really helpful to know the trends and see the numbers and start to really understand these reports. Um, if for all of our attendees, uh, thank you for joining. Um, if you liked this webinar, feel free to see it again. The webinar will be added, added to the NATDA's YouTube channel. So subscribe today by visiting natda.org and you scroll to the bottom and you can see our YouTube channel. Lastly, have you heard? We are hosting our annual trade show in St. Louis and we want you to join us. Email us for more information. I'm gonna put my email in the comments section there where you can ask questions. Um, feel free to send me an email if it's about the trade show and we'll make sure to get back to you and get you registered for our show. Uh, join us for our next webinar on March 28th at 2 p.m., the same time slot as this day, uh, with Dealer Spike's Lauren L Labanowski. We will be talking about how geofence targeting can help your dealership. And again, uh, so if we see you March 28th, fantastic. If you want to see it again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we would love to see you at our trade show. Thank you so much for joining today. We are so excited to have you here, and we look forward to seeing everybody on March 28th. Thank you again, and thank you, Jeff, for hosting this. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks again.